Holy God, we give you thanks again for this day. We ask that the meditations of my heart will be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer, that the words that are spoken today will find their place in fertile soil, and whatever is not meant, intended to be heard today, let it just wash away. We ask these things in your holy name. Amen. So the hand of God picked up the prophet Ezekiel and took him to a valley filled with dry bones. The idea that a hand of God is doing this is a little unique in the Old Testament. It doesn't usually happen this way, but that's what it says. Picked him up and put him in this valley of dry bones. Showed him all the dry bones and Look, they're really dry. It's like a magic trick. Is there any water in these bones? Test it. Test it. Listen to the bones. No water. Very dry. And then he says, mortal, God says to Ezekiel, mortal, can these bones live? Ezekiel's response is, oh God, you know. Which is kind of a nice, when you're talking to God, a nice way of saying, I don't think so. <laughs> That's not usually how this works. But you're asking, so maybe, maybe there's something going to happen here. And then God says to Ezekiel, prophesy to the bones. And Ezekiel's like, okay, bones, God loves you. <laughs> bones, there is hope for your future. <laughs> That's how I hear it. There's a lot of doubt in his words, but God says, say it. So Ezekiel says it. And the bones start to rattle around and come together, and there's muscle and sinew, and it's very graphic. It's kind of, kind of creepy. Uh, skin comes back on them, and for some reason, it takes two tries. So after everybody's assembled, God says, prophesy to the wind. And I love that. Prophesy to the four winds. Prophesy to the winds of creation to come into these bodies. So Ezekiel like, <laughs> Winds, <laughs> north wind, south wind, east, west, go into the bodies. <laughs> and the wind rushes down and it fills the lungs of all of these bodies and it makes them into living, breathing people. We've got a, I, there's a, it's easy to think about zombies in this situation, <laughs> but that's not what's happening. Is people are like, what just happened? Where did I come from? And that's the resurrection experience. We have a baptism today, and I'm just going to draw two very brief connections to the baptism in this passage. One, the baptism, the, the bones did not have to believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior in order to be raised. The bones did not have to choose anything. They did not have to do anything. They did not have to be good people or good bones. They did not have to believe in God at all. They were acted upon by the Spirit of God. God looked at these bones without them having to do anything and said, arise. And they arose. When we baptize Zoe today, baby Zoe, she doesn't have to do anything. She doesn't have to believe in Jesus. She doesn't have to believe in God. She doesn't have to be a good baby. She doesn't have to sleep through the night. She doesn't have to eat well. She doesn't have to crawl or speak on schedule. She doesn't have to do anything. Because God loves her, whether she knows it or not, God is choosing to act upon her as God chooses to act upon every child on this earth. That God loves every person on this earth, whether we choose it or not. And then secondly, God wants us to be involved in this process for some reason. We don't need to be involved. God could have gone to the Valley of Dry Bones and said, get up, bones, and nobody was there. And they got up and they walked into the city and people were like, where did you come from? I don't know. I just was all of a sudden I was in a big valley. and If bones come together in the forest and nobody's there to see it, does it really happen? <laughs> God wants us to be involved. So God says to Ezekiel, you say it. You say the words and I'll, I'll make it happen. In the same way, when we baptize Zoe today, God wants us to be involved in that process. I can't go as the pastor to Megan and Nathaniel's house and do a private baptism. That's not what we do in the Presbyterian Church. It's a community activity. We come together and we speak prophecy 
to Zoe. And we say, Zoe, God loves you. And we say, Zoe, there is hope for the future. God is going to raise you up into something that God intends you to be and created you to be. And I think that hope part, though, is, is one of the harder parts. We all know it's easy to love babies. But we're in difficult times. When Zoe is 30 years old, it will be 2050. Zoe may live to see 2100. And with all of the things that we hear in the world today about climate change and all of the things that will come with that, it's easy to, have, to lose hope about Zoe's future and about the future of all the children here in this place and throughout the world. But God says, you need to start this process of changing this world for the better, and you start it by having hope. And you start it by speaking hope. You start it by envisioning the world that I am calling you to live into. You start it by envisioning a world of justice and peace and prosperity for all people. You start it by envisioning and describing and speaking a world of thriving neighborhoods, of a world where all of the divisions between gender and race and all of the things, nationalities, are disappearing. You speak that world first in this baptism and every day, and then God will begin to do the rest. Now, we still have work to do. It's not just about speaking, 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 but it begins. It begins today, and it begins every day when we say to Zoe and every child, you have a future. God loves you. We love you. And we are going to do everything we can to help create that world. And we begin it today by speaking it into existence. Amen.